Testing, testing, testing. Excellent connection. Fantastic. Why? I can't see anything. All right. Maybe this is working. We are going to find out. I haven't done a live stream in a long time, but I remember when I did live streams like for an entire summer, I would, I would do it all the time because I wanted to just shine a light on this constant stream of repairs that are all in the same vein, which is I went to the manufacturer and they told me, insert fake news here. And what I, I've been working with Lewis a lot, Lewis Rossman, on this new repair preservation group. We're working on the right to repair, and the reason is because if we don't fight back against authorized repair, then authorized repair is going to be your only option. Authorized repair is a word that I would like for the world to kind of think about and go, oh, I'm not sure that authorized repair doesn't mean good. So that's why I'm making videos like this one here. We're going to talk about Sal's phone. Now, Sal actually called today when I answered the phone. It's Sunday's day off. She answers the phone at iPad Rehab, but not today. I answered the phone. So I get to a chance to talk with Sal, whose phone showed up here for Rush Data Recovery. And I want to fix it live with you guys and see what you think. So let's jump right into the case of Sal's phone. Let me see if I can figure out how to use all this technology. So here's Sal's phone right here. Sal's phone is not turning on, doesn't do anything. And let's go ahead and see if we can read Sal's note. So let's, let's jump right in. So I actually looked up her ticket when she called and I read this um, description. And I was like, your phone totally sounds repairable and here's why. This is what she said. She said she was on the phone with her friend and replying to a text message at the same time. Now this is an iPhone SE. And then the screen of the phone started to have mixed colored stripes. And then it faded to dim until it went all black. And yet she was still on the phone. So it was still working. So, you know, that sounds like a display issue, pretty straightforward, possibly even just the screen. So still on the phone with my friend at this point, I plugged the phone into my computer, she says, and the Apple file folder pops up. So she thinks that her phone can be fixed. So what she did is what anybody would do. You go to the people that are supposed to know how to fix your phone, the people that made the phone. So she went to Apple. She took this very phone right here to Apple, and Apple said that it's the logic board and it cannot be fixed, right? So authorized repair told Sal, your phone cannot be fixed. And if, it, if not for her data, she would have said, okay, I believe you, get a new phone. And that's why I want to make this video. Let's see if that's really true. I don't think it is. It sounds like this phone just has some kind of a display issue. All right, so let's start by Looking in the phone here, this looks like a pretty normal iPhone SE. I took off the screws right here on the top layer just to do rule number one, because it doesn't make a very fun video if the only thing wrong with the phone is actually just the screen, then it's super short. So I put a known good screen on here and it doesn't seem to have any life that you can see. However, if we look over at the USB ammeter, this phone is charging. So we can see that right now it's consuming charging current. And if we put it on a DC power supply, it looks like it's booting up normally. We can see how the electricity is moving through the phone. So sounds like this phone has a display issue. So let's troubleshoot the display issue at the level of the logic board. So I'm going to disconnect this and we're going to go troubleshoot the display issue and see if I can remember how to interact with live chat. I haven't, I really realized, man, it's really been a long time since I did a live stream. I used to do this all the time. Ah, it's, I've just been super, super busy. 
All right, we are anxiously awaiting the good news from you about error 14. So I did make a comment on my error 14 video and there is some progress. I wanna make just one update video. So the, the, the short answer is that for older phones, some of them you can get past error 14. If you have an iPhone like 10S, 11, you're out of luck. But if you have an older phone, then bear with us. But I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I don't want to get it wrong. And I want to make sure that I have confirmation and a plan. So that's, that's something that we're going to have to, to let that unfold with when I'm convinced that I'm telling the truth, then I will tell you. But that's the deal. There's some hope for error 14. Every case is individual though, so it's nothing easy. So it's a, it's, it's a, a, big, a whole big thing. All right, so back to Sal's phone here where the authorized repair said, no can do buckaroo on at the board level. So I always approach these system problems the same way every time, which is diode mode in the connector. If the phone turns on butt, we're gonna diode mode in the connector. So let's see. Can I still, does my microscope view work? Let's see. Um, let's check this out. Here we go to the microscope. So we're gonna go check out the display connector. So here's the display connector. We're thinking that Sal's problem here might just be no image. In fact, maybe it's even just no backlight. So we don't know. So what I'm gonna do is diode mode in the connector. Now in order for this diode mode in the connector to make sense, I need to have a source of what's the known good diode mode reading. So I have another iPhone SE that is here that is my known good and I can kind of put them almost, you know, sort of quasi side by side, right? So I'm gonna maybe zoom out here. Well, let's see, how can we see this in the same view? We'll just sort of switch back and forth. All right, so we're gonna go very quickly and just diode mode down this connector. So we're gonna go red probe on ground and I'll have to just tell you what the trust based multimeter says. That says OL, ground. This is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, ground, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, ground. 0.5, ground. So let's, that seems like it's gonna be normal. So that one was Sal's. Let's check the known good and just check that top one is also OL, ground. And then let's see, do we get 0.5? Yep, 0.5, ground. Yep, so these are the image data lines and they always sort of follow this pattern where you have ground and then Data line, data line, ground, data line, data line, ground. In fact, the last phone I fixed, this 8 Plus, that was here for no image after a repair. Somebody was just changing the, the glass. They knocked one of those little data chokes off, and there was an open line that you could pick up so quickly just like this. All right, now we're going to go back to Sal's phone, and we're going to do that other side of the connector. Now, if you're lucky, sometimes the diode mode stuff is written down, like in ZXW, but not for the old iPhone SE. Nobody loved the iPhone SE enough to actually write down its diode mode measurements. So that was open there, and then 0.2. Now that might be low. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So open, two, three, four, and that's all I can remember in my mind. As I get older, I can't remember anything. So I can't remember more than four things at one time. All right, so this is different. That is 0.3 and that is 0.4. All right, so here we're getting ground on the working phone. And what are we getting over here? Oh, also ground. All right, what was this third one? 0.3 and what is it over here? This third one. 0.3, and what about this one? 0.4, and now let's go back to this fourth one. 0.4, and let's check. Let's just go look over at ZXW just to make it 
just to see if we can get lucky and actually see these numbers written down or not. All right, let's see. Happy to see you have the energy to show a pair, repair after 11 p.m. I don't really have the energy, but I'm going on a trip tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to ride the train six hours to New York City with the kids. And it's spring break, so we're going to do that. And I just thought, hey, see what we can do with Sal's repair. Mostly because I talked to Sal on the phone today, and I don't want to go on a vacation and leave Sal hanging. So we're just going to take a stab and see whether or not we can fix old Sal's phone here. All right. So this really is jumping out at me. I, I, um, I don't think we're supposed to have ground here. Just, yeah, we're not supposed to have ground here on pin three. All right. So on... Can you guys see that on ZXW? ZXW doesn't have those juicy diode mode readings written out for us. But we can just use our brain here and say that we know that PP5V7 LCM, that's one of the chestnut's image outputs. And this is something that goes bad in a lot, in a lot of phones. In fact, I fixed... Oh my gosh, this one right here, by chance. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, 6S, backlight solution. Wasn't backlight solution, it was this same rail, PP5V7. PP5V7 goes bad all the time. So we're gonna, we're gonna kinda look hard when we cross PP5V7. So PP5V7 in every other phone, the normal diode mode reading is about 0.5. So this is the second pin here. So let's go back and see, because I think it was ground in the, it was coming up as ground in diode mode, but let's, let's check. Seemed like it was ground in the normal one. All right, let's go back to the microscope and let's see. All right, so this one is OL, that's normal. And this one, I'm getting 0.2, and 0.2 is low. Now let's go check the supposedly known good, but to be honest, this phone just came here in the mail. I ordered it for its housing for some other job. Yeah, 0.5. So this is a great, <laughs> great thing that I, I watch so many students do all the time that I undoubtedly just did myself. When you're taking these diode mode readings, especially when you're working quickly and, and chatting, it's really easy when you go to take this, look at what I'm doing. See how I'm, I just said ground, look, ground. Why am I getting a beep? Why do I hear that? Look, I'm, I'm holding it so close, so precise. Look what I'm doing. My probe is laying down and it's touching the other side of the connector right there. Yeah, it's really hard to not do that. There we go. I'm holding it up so that it's not actually leaning on the connector. In fact, one time when I was teaching practical board repair school, I remember watching um, a group you know, decide, hey, this line is short because they didn't realize their probe was touching, touching the edge of the bracket. It's touching ground somewhere and they don't realize it. So I was like, ah, I'm not sure about that. How about somebody else jump in there? Next person, beep, yep, it's ground. They did the same thing. Next person, beep, ground. Next, Four people in a row all concluded that this line was touching ground. So you have to really watch out for that. If something doesn't make sense, then, then stop and, and see if you might be just taking the measurement wrong, just like I did here. All right, so here on our known good, this pin here, pin, Number three, the second position here, if I take a correct reading with red probe on ground and this, I'm going to hold it up so I'm just touching the top, I get 0.5. That's correct. That's typical. That's what all of those PP5E7 lines are. And then if I come back to Sal's phone here where, I mean, I have no way of knowing what's actually wrong, but just from experience, that's, you know, 0.2. That is a partial short on that PP5V7 line. But why? We don't know. So now we've got to go on a hunt. And I really don't know for sure. I have no way to know um, where this line is touching ground. 
So let's go on a hunt. Let's investigate. Let's see what can we do. Let's go check. I laugh whenever Jess and Lewis say the names of electrical components that start with PP. You know what? I had a really great talk with um, a guy named Eric who was chiming in on some of this right to repair stuff with the voice of someone that actually designs circuit boards for a living. And we, we, you know, and I made him a promise that I would stop saying I2C just out of respect for the time that he put into that right to repair conversation. So um, I'm gonna maybe clean, maybe try to work on my electrical vocabulary. I'm not sure, I, I don't think I, I'm cut out for that, but I'll give it a try. All right, so what are we doing now? Let's see, can we go to the schematics? Boom, look at the stream deck rocking and rolling in here. I mean, I have no idea if you guys can actually hear me because it is pretty late, but looks like stream deck is going. All right, so we got to look up, uh, here's the old iPhone SE schematic, which I don't know that I've ever really had to work from this. All right, so J4200, that's the display connector. We wanna, we wanna kind of walk down that line because it's short. Why is it short? Some kind of a cap or chip on that line is touching ground. So let's see if we can hunt it down. All right, so it's J4200. Let's try to remember J4200. It's more than four things, it's five things. J4200, I'm gonna see if I can remember that for as long as it takes for me to get to the actual schematic, J4200. All right, here we are. We're gonna do control F and find J4200. Woo, remembered it. I remember when I first had to, when I first felt like I was actually getting old, I was like 32 maybe. <laughs> and I remember having to give up doing math in public. I was teaching a class at RIT when I was teaching general biology lab and you know, I was like asking different lab groups for, you know, their, to report the numbers they got on some test and then I had to add them together. And I got to the point where like I, I could not add like 36 plus seven. I'm just like, I, I don't, I'm gonna have to count on my fingers, guys. You know, and it was like, I'm never doing this again. I'm gonna give this up. And as I get older, you can see like in having to navigate this stuff on the fly, man, that's, that starts to make me feel pretty dumb. All right, here we are, line number three, PP5E7LCM. This line is the line that has an inappropriately low diode mode reading. Now, normally a diode mode reading that's like 0.2 instead of 0.5 is probably no big deal, but this line just tends to go bad, and that's where experience comes in. So now let's, we're gonna follow it from the connector. Where does this line go? What does it do? And here it goes. I see there's a capacitor, C4204, C4203. Any of those could actually be touching ground or leaking to ground and causing our line to have this sort of low resistance. Filter, it's not going to be the filter, but we've got a whole slew of capacitors on the other side of that line. And it's got a little bit of a name change as it crosses this filter. So we're going to have to delete this sucker. And all right that's the same spot that's where we've already been and here we go to the actual origin of pp 5 lcm it's one of the chestnut outputs and i think that's probably why it goes bad all the time because this is a boost chip it takes main which is kind of low it does magic with the coil and it boosts it up to six volts and then it sends it down um down these output lines and they just tend to, to go bad. Now we can see these capacitors here are rated for a voltage of up to 10 volts. In some of the older phones, they're only rated for up to like six volts and that just seems to be too tight on that line, I don't know. All right, so we could have our failure be actually within the chip, within chestnut, or let's see which one of these guys is actually on the line C. Or 004. So that's our possibilities. It's any one of these guys. So now we're going to need to go on a hunt. And let's see if ZXW can tell us where these guys are. So let's click ZXW. Boom! I love the stream deck. I'm loving the stream deck. The only thing I really need is to be able to have my chat. 
where I can see it. So I, I have to like click around to see to see chat. Hey Jessa, thanks for the fast shipping for my flux. Plus one shill for store, iPad rehab. Yeah, man, Katrina is rocking it on supply. Um, although we, we sold so much supply at the last class, we made these packages that were like uh, for everything that you need for beginner micro soldering students that come in to just be like, I want it all, just put box it up my whole station. So we started doing that. And in doing that, we realized, man, our supply store website, we've outgrown for sure. So we're going to, to transition from the, the like newbie e-commerce website that we have now, Equid. I don't know if anybody uses Equid. And we're gonna, we're gonna see. All right, uh, I, she's gonna feel dumb. Oh yeah, I feel dumb all the time. I feel so dumb. All right, hi Jessa, one of your oldest videos, you said you wouldn't show schematics. I did? Really? I don't believe that, is that true? But on newer videos, you always show schematics. What changed your opinion on that? Um, I don't remember ever saying that. That would be weird to me if I ever said that. If I did say that, I can only imagine that it was because I didn't have an easy ability, you know, to, you know, to, to show stuff. Or I think if I, if, I, if I ever was given something that wasn't public, then I wouldn't show that. But this stuff is all super public. Anybody can Google this stuff. All right, what are we doing now? We are going to see if ZXW can just kind of give us a hint where to look, right? So we've got our connector, and we know we've got a bunch of these caps and then chestnut. So here's one of them. It could be C4204. So that could be the case. Or it could be C4203. That's one that I would hope for, because if it's C4203, then we can clear the shore without taking the board out. Wouldn't that be great? Now, on the other side of the filter, it could be any one of these three or C4004. Now, I think that C4004, I've seen that guy be short before. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the guy. That's just what experience says. That guy has been short before in an iPhone SE. It's underneath the CPU shield and it's a little bit bigger. And we find that if you have a bunch of caps on a line, more likely than not, it's the biggest one that turns into a wire. But we'll see. This last one that I just did, this iPhone 6S with the same line was short. It ended up not being the classic capacitor that always goes bad. It was the one next to it. So before we take the board out and go after C4004, Let's just put our eyes on these guys and see if we can, you know, maybe one of them's going to look all burnt up. And then don't forget chestnut on the bottom side under the shield. Those are our possibilities. Chat, which one do you think? Let's take some votes. Which one of these guys is causing PP5B7LCM to be leaking to ground? So you guys can think on that while I jump back under the microscope and we're going to look at these guys and see if we can see anything that looks burnt up. Kaba says, I believe this is a video where you hardwired a flex. Don't remember for sure offhand. Hardwiring a flex usually means I don't have a schematic. So I don't know. That would be ancient. Was it back from dining room days? Look at what some somebody has done to my to my noble superb tweezers. I don't know why I, I, I put up with this. They have made it into the custom hook tweezers, but that's not supposed to be what the gold tweezers are for. All right, show me something burned. Come on, burned up looking somebody. Please be burned up. Who is it? Curtis says it's going to be the big dog. Curtis, I think you might be right, although I don't want you to be right because I want for... I don't want to have to take the board out. I would prefer for the problem to be the problem that I want to solve, not what the actual problem is. All right, so as we, we're looking here, it could be this guy, it could be these guys. None of them really jump out at you. They're not like cracked looking or completely exploded. So we're going to have to say time to actually turn some screws and take this board out because... Curtis says it's going to be that C, 
what was it, 4004? Uh, don't quote me on that, I would have to look. All right, so let's go to the hand cam and I am gonna take the, take the board out because we have to desolder this shield in order to get to that. Hopefully I have my right drivers that I need to, to do this. And we'll see, Lewis is arguing with Erica about houses in Hawaii. What? Well, Lewis just bought his first car, which I'm super excited to go see. So uh, I have been driving a Prius, not my Prius, but grandma was doing everything right. She was out trying to get some exercise ahead of her second vaccination. This was about a month ago. And it's cold up here in western New York and grandma was out on the high school track with her cane taking a walk and she fell down snapped both of her uh, wrist bones the little you know bones in her arm and she broke her hip so Boom, 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 just all of a sudden. That is like a, a year of physical therapy. So really, really sucks. So keep up with your weightlifting, gals. You gotta build up that bone density. I've been taking that to heart, been back in the gym, deadlifting as, as much as I possibly can. Because I think I've got like three years left to build up that bone density so that I can avoid grandma's fate. But grandma, let me drive her Prius since she's laid up. And I'll tell you what, man, I drove that thing for a month and I only had to get gas one time. And when I went to get gas, it was only 20 bucks, 20 bucks for a month of gas. Like that's pretty crazy. So now um, <laughs> that's in stark contrast to my everyday vehicle, which is who, who wants to guess? parked outside right now, the traditional everyday vehicle that I am forced to drive around that I really don't even like. Let's see, who knows what car Jessa drives. Time for the Please Bro Thermal Cam. I like that, the Please Bro Thermal Camera, that's what we should call it. Jessa's car is, what does Jessa drive to work? Let's see. Um, hmm, let's see. Back in 2015, I will not distribute Apple schematics. I believe in repair, but I believe in intellectual property too. Eh. Close, F-150, super, super close. It is a, you don't call it Dodge Ram anymore, just Ram, it's a Ram truck. Ram truck, I don't even know, 2,500 or something like that, a big old, four-wheel drive Ram truck, which now I can't stand because I, it, <laughs> the four-wheel drive did not prevent it from getting stuck in the snow. In my driveway, you know, within the last six weeks or so, and it was stuck, and my husband's little tiny Ford Fusion with snow tires just buzzed right around it and went up the driveway. Okay, Jessa, why are you visiting Lewis? take a ride in his new Tesla. I am going to New York City by chance to take the kids to ride bikes in Central Park and pretty much just hang out in an Airbnb in the rain. But while I'm there, of course I'll visit Lewis. And I definitely want to check out his new car because now that Prius was like, you know, it really made me realize I can't be driving this truck. And I usually don't, I usually ride my bike. Highly recommend the pedal assist bike, the conventional one, built by professionals, you know, not, not built by people. All right, so hopefully you guys can see taking this shield off. Oh, maybe not, there we go. Shields off, now we can put our eyes on the big dog, as Curtis says, which is that capacitor. Let's remind ourselves in case we all uh, fell asleep a little bit. It is pretty late. This guy, C4004, which is right up here at the top. That guy I have seen go bad before. So we are going to go kind of put him on the hit list. All right, so where is he? 
So now that we have our shield off, looks beautiful. Look at that. This is what's so amazing about board repair. You know, one of these guys, <laughs> one of these beautiful looking, nothing wrong with it all capacitor. Him, him, those three girls. You can just tell. These ones are, they're like sisters, three in a row. Dude, little brother. And then this big dog. All right, off with the big dog. And we are going to use the special iPad Rehab Short Killer. This is, this, is what, this is what the tool, the essential tool that fixes more boards than anything else. The iPad Rehab Short Killer. What should we call this on the soon-to-be rebranded supply site? The Exacto of Doom, the unauthorized repair tool. I don't really know. All right, so we're going to just give it the yield flick. Come on. Flick. And I like it when they don't flick. When they don't flick, then they make me worried that that wasn't the right dude. All right, now, come here, big dog. Come up on stage. We're going to question you if I don't make you fly away. Are you, in fact, responsible for the short, yes or no? First, we are going to go diode mode our line. So now with him sitting pretty up on the stage, let's do red probe on ground and let's go back to that spot. And what do we have now? We have a multimeter that went to sleep. All right, here we go. Oh, man, 0.295. I don't think that's going to be good enough. 0.297. Was it not the big dog? Oh, God, I'm going to be so pissed. Taking the board out for nothing. Man. All right, let's see. Let's ask him, do you have continuity across you, buddy? Nope. Because there's nothing wrong with you. It's just why you didn't flick off. Sheesh. All right. Now, let's see. Let's, for fun, use a thermal camera to see which one of these guys, or, God forbid, it's chestnut underneath the shield. That would suck. So now we're, gonna, we're not just going to guess. We're going to forget about the stupid experience tool. That obviously didn't work, and we're going to get another one. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks for nothing. The Cap Reaper. I like that. The Cap Reaper tool. Exactly. Jessa has to teach Paul Daniels how to rip off caps like that. Big dogs gotta eat, says Curtis. The Capacitor Castrator. I like that. All of those are pretty good. All right. So let's see what we're going to do for a uh, wire. Hmm. My wire is not here anymore. And I distinctly remember Christy talking this morning on Team Chat about needing my 36 gauge wire to refill something. Let's see, would this be way, way, way too big? Eh, maybe. All right, which side of yield C4004, which side of that is the side that we need to solder a wire to? Let's find out. It's the inside, not my favorite side. All right, so the inside is where we would need to stick a wire in order to heat this party up. And I think I'm going to have to go grab a wire from someplace else. I'm going to have to go raid Christie Station, and I bet, betcha, that I find that wire right there. Okay, so that's our spot. Now we need the wire so that we can inject some juice. I also don't know where my thermal camera is either. Hmm. All right, we're going to have to go on a hunt. Let's see. Let's look over here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, I see. Right by Christy's desk. I found my wire. All right, so we're going to have to make a little... A nice little 36 gauge jumper that's going to go right there so we can try to fix this. Okay, caps would be too easy. Oh, it's going to be a cap. It's going to be 
I don't know. It could be Chestnut. I mean, now that you think about it, it's like her, Sal's story was she was on the phone and then it went to stripes and then it faded to no image, which is kind of weird. That is, that is a, a weird thing. Usually these capacitors turn into wires after a drop, like you drop the phone and then no image. So maybe we're going to end up finding out that authorized repair was right. What do you guys think? What's the chance of that? that authorized repair is right and that this, quote, cannot be fixed. And that it's going to be a sad day for Sal tomorrow. And we have to tell her, listen, I know I read your note yesterday. And I told you, yeah, it sounds pretty repairable. Good chance while we don't know for sure. Somebody called me up once and was like, man, you got to, you got to like cut way down on telling people, oh, look, it's recoverable before you actually have all of their data copied to a drive. Maybe he's right. What do you think? All right. We've got to get this on here. All right. How about the oh crap dough knife, which is short for the oh crap dough. I accidentally took out the big boy when it was unnecessary. Yeah, we could go with that, the big boy sacrificer, the unfortunate demise of the big dog, the dog killer. All right, now let's go back to the old hand cam. Ah, what did I hit? I don't even know. Oh, no, this <laughs> is the dark side of stream deck when I don't know what I hit. Okay, I think I hit it. I think I got the right one. All right, let's see if we can possibly pull this off. All right, so let's turn the voltage down to like not that much. All right, so now we all need to collectively like kind of summon whatever energy and forces in the world and try to create the problem that we want to solve. So what we want to see here is one of these easy little capacitors right here by the connector. We want one of them to shine really brightly when we apply electricity into the shorted line. What we don't want is to see a diffuse heat because the problem is chestnut, which is under that shield, because that's going to be a real pain. So let's take a moment to try and make the problem be the problem that we want to solve. Let's see. Are you guys all helping out? This is a live stream after all, so you right now can help make this problem be the problem that we want to solve. All right, technically anything is fixable. It just depends on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I mean, the, the, and that's part of the problem, right? If that, if that were true, then a lot of this right to repair stuff wouldn't matter, right? So I cannot fix your broken touch ID. I'm not allowed to because I'm not authorized. Oh, I see smoke. Did you see some smoke? I saw smoke. All right, let's turn. Let's apply just a little bit of electricity to this, to this short. We're going to set a current limit and we're going to turn our volts down to like one. All right, let's see. Jessa, you make micro soldering feel so spiritual. Which is funny because I'm really not, I'm like not a spiritual person. I um, just play one on TV. I'm a scientist. All right. Have we all made the problem be the problem that we want to solve? I hope so. Now, how am I going to use this? How am I going to use my camera? I'm going to use. This is something that everybody wants to know. I'm going to use the lower resolution. Let's get the orange dot. I'm going to use the lower resolution Seek Compact, not Compact Pro, with the iPad Rehab macro lens. So you guys can get to see what is the difference. Most of my streams, I'm using the regular old Seek Compact Pro, but the student one right here is out of charge and mine is walked over there somewhere. So what I do have here 
is the lower resolution one. All right, here's the lower resolution one. All right, let me see, let me check over with OBS to see if you have any remote chance of being able to see this at all. Let's do, make this be farther away. All right, here's our little system. All right, now we don't, I don't have the thing hooked up yet, so we're just sitting here open line. Now as we kind of look around, see how there's a, a reflection of the sensor itself. So none of that is actual heat, right? It's not, it's not hot at all. So we're gonna, we're gonna attach ground and see what happens. Aha, yes, you guys did it. You guys, yes, you, it worked. You did it. Your energy came, this is amazing. You guys did it. Your energy came through the internet and it turned this phone right into the problem that I wanted to, to fix all along. Thank you guys. You have made it so much easier to fix Sal's phone now we don't have to take the back shield off. All we have to do is take off. Look, you can even see which one it is. Remember the three sisters? It's that bitch on the end. See that? It's a little bit, a little bit hard for you guys to see. There we go. See this camera like kind of ranges around. But yeah, I mean you can kind of get down to the single cap level. This one looks like a, a fun one. Let's go for freeze spray. Just for fun, we'll use the, the old-fashioned freeze spray. Man, I almost don't even regret taking off the, the uh, big dog just so that we could put that wire there and see. All right, let's... Now, that's, this is two in a row where it's the non-classic capacitor. All right, it's a wintry day in... Ooh, good thing that didn't blow up. Wintry day in Boardville, and oh, you can't quite see it. Let's let's spray her down. Now we're gonna just tap it and see. Can we figure out which one it is? Ah, that one right there. That 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 sister on the end. And now. I already forgot. What did we agree that we were going to call this thing? The mm, uh, Curtis claims to have told us all that it was the little dog. I don't know about that. All right. Do you re recommend the compacts over the FLIR cam? Oh yes, the FLIR cam is terrible because of the whole offset. You know, science is truth is the essence of spirituality. Oh, okay, that's too late for that stuff. All right, now. Who can remember which one it is? All right, let's just be sure that we're about to knock off the correct dude to ZXW. ZXW is now a little bit flipped around for us, but it's fine. So we are now looking at this one here on the end, I think. Could be the neighbor. I think it's the one on the end. However, I am wrong quite a bit, quite a bit. Let's see. Authorized repair says, None of them, don't worry about it, it can't be fixed. I say, it's that capacitor on the end. Let's knock it off the board and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna, oh yeah. I like it when they come off nice and easy. Nice and easy, see you later. All right, to the multimeter. To the multimeter, folks. Let's see what is it gonna be for the win. Come on. Come on for, for, for Sal. This one's for you, Sal. What's it going to be? Yeah. 0.5. Yay. All right. 0.5 for the win. Now it's almost worth it for me to go dig up a replacement capacitor. Not going to do it but it's almost worth it for me to replace that capacitor. In my experience, I'll be able to recover data from this phone without replacing that capacitor. And I know, since I talked to Sal today, that she 
already has a new phone and this phone belongs to the insurance company and I'm not helping them because they're authorized and they can suck it because they don't even think this board can be fixed at all. So I'm not putting that cap back on. And that's why. Now, if this was my board or, some, or one that I was trying to fix and use, then I would look it up on the schematic. So we would have to look up where is C 4004. So let's make sure we understand how we would do that because it's right there. It's super easy for us to see right now. There it is. C 4004 is missing. That guy is big, 10 microfarad capacitor. And on this whole line, there's not that many, right? So he is one of really just a handful, right? If we trace back down the down the line, the other ones that are on this line are 2.2 microfarad, right? So he's the big one, big dog, Curtis said. So I would replace him if, um, if this were not a phone that was, that was going back to authorized repair. So 10 microfarad capacitors, see how all of these ones here are the same? It's pretty easy to find a 10 microfarad capacitor with about 20% plus or minus, and in size 0402. That's like a Lego, right? So that's gonna be kind of a garden variety cap. Now you, you can't put just a random cap in there. You gotta make sure that it's real big dog. You don't wanna have any impersonators. It has to be a 10 microfarad capacitor, but that'll be pretty easy to find. However, Sal doesn't care about C4004 and neither do I. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see whether or not this logic board is gonna boot up right now. So let's go to the hand cam, and first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take off our wire, and then we will see whether or not we can recover data, because that is our job. All right, didn't she have faith in your work? Um, she had never heard of me <laughs> until, um, until, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how. Oh, yeah. She asked me if I was on some, like, I don't know. She saw the news or something like that. So she she was really just hoping. But you can tell. She's, she's like, I don't know. They, <laughs> the, the people that made the phone said, this cannot be fixed. It's a logic board. Nothing you could do. That's, I mean, seriously, that's hard. Who believes that that's wrong and nope? Send it to some mom who jokes around in her shop all by herself at midnight on a Monday. Who even does that at all? She, she can get your data. That's crazy, and I totally acknowledge that. However, I think that Sal um, may have made a good choice here. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to sort of loosely stick this back in the housing, and we are going to see whether or not... It's going to be good news for Sal. Was Sal right to trust independent repair? And that's a tough question because, you know, there's, there's, there's bad repair everywhere. And that's kind, of, that's kind of the point. There's no good repair. There's bad repair and there's worse repair. Authorized repair is not good repair. Independent repair is not good repair. Don't get that confused. There's bad repair everywhere. So what can you do? You can use your brain. You gotta, you gotta talk to people. Find out, is there someone near me or someone that I can, I can trust? Somebody that has a, you know, good reviews that are reliable? That's really hard for the consumer. It really, really is. But what they need is choice. So I'm a big fan of choice and repair. iPad Rehab, fix it so it works again. So they know better next time. This is going straight back to Assurian. It was really fun answering the phone today though. I got to talk to so many people. I got to talk to this old lady who also has an SE and she called me Suge the whole time, which was hilarious. She, she, I answered the phone and she's like got all her, you know, all these thousands of pictures trapped on her iPhone SE. And I asked her, you know, first I was like, all right, tell me what phone you have. And she goes, Shug, Shug, it's old, like me. It's an iPhone SE. 
She was a hoot going on and on about her. Yay! About her son in Alaska and had to go to Guam, all kinds of stuff. I met another guy who's sending in his 10S Max because it's got, it's got the contact on it of the lady from Shark Tank. And his whole cookie business in Massachusetts depends on getting her number back. It is such a fun job to do data recovery. And look at that. It's going to be good news for Sal. Come on, Sal's phone. You can boot up and we can see. Let's turn the lights off and let's let the camera see. It is kind of hard for the camera to see. Yes, there we go. We have it all the way booted up and we have a path to data. So there we go. And it does have lines in the screen. That's probably because we're missing the big dog. All right, there we go. That is a success. It can be fixed. In order for this to be perfectly working phone, big dog goes back on, all the screws back in, put the shields back on. It can be fixed. This was a pretty straightforward problem. So there you go. Authorized repair told you that this phone can't be fixed, but you guys can see exactly what troubleshooting looks like. And we're going to recover her data because that's our job. And I really don't like to take any risks. So I'm not going to put any one of these things back on until we get her data safely because that's our job. But this phone, if we wanted to make it be a phone again, pretty straightforward repair. So there you go. Authorized repair is not good repair. It's just another repair, which sometimes is okay sometimes totally sucks. So thanks for watching this one. Good news for Sal. And I am going to go home and pack my bags for New York City. And I will see you guys next time.